Good afternoon. Um, this is just mainly like a very high level macro view of what marketing can do for innovative nonprofits. So starting out, we're looking at the diffusion of innovation model. I believe it was coined in the mid to late 1900s. And so there are a few uh, few sections in here that you need to note. The first being the innovators, second, early adopters, third, early majority, late majority, and laggards. So let's deep dive in how I interpret this. So the innovators, a small 2.5%. This would be you and your support group. This is like your tribe of people that help you keep um, your wits about you when you're experiencing fear, uncertainty, and doubt about your innovation. And uh, trust me, it, it will be uh, uh, pretty doubtful at times because you probably will not get traction for a while. And you're going to have to live within that unknown, that sort of like uh prolonged gratification is it's definitely not instantaneous unless you have some of the few factors that i'll get into later all right so going into the early adopters the early adopters of your innovation this is like mainly your gatekeepers and major foundations these are the people that are actually going to really be using it and this could be your target audience, at least initially, like your primary audience. And then you can kind of change it as you get past this, uh, this phase. And one reason why this would be good to think of putting major foundations here is because they'll be able to fund your operations if you're able to write a very compelling grant to say there is a very high significance for this innovation. And, you know, you can go into the social impact or even more grant writing methodologies. Moving into the early majority, this is going to be the people that would socially benefit from it. So you had the innovator. That's you and your tribe. You and your tribe when to speak to the gatekeepers and the major foundations to help support your operations and utilize it and put it into place for operations. Now, because you went past that, you have the infrastructure to target the, the people who would benefit from this. And this is going to be your, your primary audience once you've changed it from the gatekeepers and the major foundations. Going on into the late majority, I like to think of this as your target audience's support network. For example, family or even students. So let's say I have one person affected by a certain disease. The innovation is to help treat that disease. And so it was able to reach the people who are afflicted by the disease. And then later on, it is then adopted by family members, students through internships, and so on and so forth. Now you may be thinking, who are the laggards? Well, the laggards are pretty much everyone else that would be accepting your program as the sort of standard of care. Okay, so just a quick recap. We've started with the innovators. We went into the second phase of the early adopters, went into the early majority, to then influence the later majority. And one reason why this would work, how you can bridge this, this is through uh, a thing called other person's network. And so if you think about it as like a social network analysis, you're you're influencing the gatekeepers that have access to um, the people afflicted by the disease you're trying to help 
uh, cure or at least alleviate the symptoms. And because you have access to their network now, you've influenced the tertiary network, which is the support group or rather support network for the individuals in the early majority. So it went this as the first OPN to the secondary OPN to the tertiary OPN. And because you've influenced it so much uh, by being able to diffuse across so many different networks, social networks, you're able to hit the laggards because they're seeing it as the social norm. And slowly the social norm will become the standard of care because everyone is doing it. So now to go a little bit deeper into it, we are going to be thinking about uh, sort of like this through a metaphor. So think about yourself. You're a high school student and you're applying to an undergraduate uh, college. And so you definitely want to have great endorsements because good endorsements for your application is going to mean that um, you're going to be looked upon as a credible person that the university can invest within you to make a bigger social impact. So now that you have your endorsements, you're moving along and eventually, you know, you metaphorically graduate, you have your credibility, you have your bachelor's degree, you have your master's degree, or you have your graduate degree, preferably. And so now what does this symbolize? This just symbolizes that you have the credibility, you've built your brand. And in this metaphor is like a personal brand. So that when people look at you, they're like, oh, wow, they're really credible. Like this person, this person, this organization really knows what they're talking about because they've proven it on so many levels. And so you've done that. And so now you're ready to go influence the world. And how do you do that? Well, you first do that by taking your credibility, your base foundation, studying the problem on a level that really uh, nobody else has done. And then engaging the stakeholders that are most relevant to help alleviate the problem, that root cause of why this is happening. And so once we've engaged the stakeholders, we're going to look at persuading the stakeholders. To persuade the stakeholders, typically there's a, a team of three different types of people. The first one, the first type of person is called a connector. They're going to get you those, uh, those sort of like time slots to the right people. They're going to get you... Uh, introductions to the people you need to speak to and they're going to really help you get across all of that red tape the second is the Mavericks you can kind of think of this as like uh, the subject matter experts the people with deep foundational knowledge and uh, from my experience usually the owner of the nonprofit is the Maverick themselves in other times they're more so the salespeople however I haven't yet met a, a nonprofit CEO that is the actual connector. Not yet, anyway. And so it goes on to the salesperson. This is the people who, who can live with the Mavericks and the connectors. The connector is going to allow the Maverick to make that connection to the most influential person or subsequent influential person while the sale person helps persuade everyone in the background or even goes with the maverick to help sell the idea of why this is such a good thing and so having it all combined as three people three three types of people within a team is sort of like a very huge macro view of marketing there are definitely different methods and tactics to it however the main goal no matter what is just to move amongst all of these phases in a sequential manner that's very thoughtful and considerate about 
which stage of the process you're in. So whenever you start something new, you're always here. The problem starts to be how do you get from here to there? How do you, how do you get from here to there? How do you get from here to there? And how do you get from here to there? If you can figure that out through a sort of mixture of these three people, then I think you're going to be in pretty good shape. So thank you for your time. I look forward to seeing you again.